Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. The purpose of the show is to help you realize that you are not alone. You are in control of your life. It does not matter what your lot in life is or where you came from. We have all felt pain, suffering, hurt, abandonment, loneliness, hopelessness, etc. The show helps you to take those dark moments and turn them around to create a whole new you. We, we were taught to be a certain way, act a certain way, conform to society. Being socialized is not bad, but it can put constraints on us. The guests I bring on the show are telling you their story of where they were and where they came from and the obstacles they overcame and where they are today. They are sharing the tools they use to recreate themselves and their life. On podcast.kathleenmflanagan.com is a list of the guests that have been on the show with their contact information. I am aware that you may resonate with one or several of them. My desire is that this becomes a community where you have access to the people you wish to align with and utilize the tools that they have as well as the tools being offered on KathleenMFlanagan.com. I am a certified coach who can help you reach your dreams. I help you learn how to rely on and believe in your unlimited potential and power. I already know that you've experienced flashes of intuitive knowledge and big thinking that has you wondering just how far could I fly if only. I'm here to help you stir that up that innate knowing and self-trust already st instilled deep within your soul. I help you to forge forward when the old you would rather give up and turn back. Awakeningspirit.com is an aromatherapy-based body care line that offers alternative healing remedies and uses natural and organic ingredients. We are offering a 40% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. The products are guaranteed, and if a product is not working, please contact me, and I will reformulate the blend specifically for you. GrandmasNaturalRemedies.net is a CBD company that uses essential oils in every blend and has either a broad spectrum or an isolate. Every product is tested, and the lab results are on the website. We are offering a 20% discount by entering Brave TV into the coupon code. I start every show... I start the show every week with sound from the tuning forks and I bring in love, happiness, and balance. This sets the tone for the show and brings out the best in both my guest and myself. Let's begin. Liam Nottam is an ambitious success seeker who tried everything to achieve success and become a multimillionaire and business entrepreneur only to lose everything and become homeless in his mid forties <clears throat> In rebuilding his life in a much better way than before. He uncovered the key to creating the ideal life using your brain the right way. His mission is now to share his understanding with others so that they too can achieve balance and true fulfillment in their lives as he has done. <clears throat> My audience will learn how we truly function as human beings, how the brain is designed to create for you a life without problems, and there are four parts to the brain. He touches on science, religion, psychology, and philosophy to explain this. <clears throat> you will learn some simple yet powerful ways to improve the quality of your life in an immediate and measurable way. What he shares is not about mindfulness, positive thinking, rewiring the brain, or the subconscious mind. However, he does explain the underlying reasons why we get the results we do in our life, which our audience, you, the audience, will find refreshing, empowering, and entertaining. He can also talk about marriage and his new book, Marriage Uncounseling, a counterintuitive approach to healing relationships and restoring love. Welcome, Neom. Hi, yeah. Kathleen. Thank you very much for having me. Great to be You're here. You're welcome. It's good to have you. And what part of the country are you, or the world, I should say, are you living in? 
Uh, well, I, I'm a permanent traveler, but at the moment I'm in Denmark in Europe. Okay. Okay. Mm. Yes, and you're going to tell us all about that little story too. I guarantee you that. <laughs> so why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your journey of becoming an awakening spirit? Well, I guess I had what many people would like to have and what I was very grateful to have, and that was an awakening moment. And really it, it happened for me a few years ago now when I'd really achieved all of my goals. You know, I'd become a multimillionaire and I just completed just putting the finishing touches on my dream home, building my dream home. And I even had my own music room because I was a musician earlier in my life. And it was always a dream to have my own private music room. But I remember one morning going into the music room and sitting down and it was a lovely day. The sun was streaming in and I was looking out over the, through the, the glass windows over an incredible view that we had. There were horses in the fields outside, our own horses. The mountains were in the distance. And I should have been feeling wonderful. I should have been saying to myself, I've made it. This is total bliss and happiness. I've achieved my goals. This is wonderful. But instead of feeling that, instead of feeling really grateful and happy, I actually felt worse than I had ever felt in my life, pretty much. You know, I'd really reached rock bottom because here I was so stressed and so unhappy and I just have, had a blazing row with my wife at the time. And I had three businesses that I was operating at the time and I had, I had all these problems with the business and it was all just coming crashing down on me and I was sitting there thinking, why can't I enjoy my success? Why do I feel so awful? Why do I feel so stressed? Why are some area of, areas of my life going well and other areas are absolutely terrible? I can't be happy. Is this really what life is? Surely it's got to be more than this. This isn't what I signed up for. And whether it's a voice or a thought or a, this idea came to me, you know, I really would rather lose absolutely everything I had and just walk away from all of this if it meant I could find my soul. If I could get my sense back of who I am and get some relief and peace in my life. Well, well as we all know, you have to be careful what you think about or what you, <laughs> what what you, ask you wish for. for. Yeah. Because <laughs> literally, literally within two months, that's what happened. I lost everything. I lost oh the God. house. I lost my businesses. I lost the marriage. Everything. And I had to, literally with just a, a few clothes on my back, the only place I could go was to move back in with my elderly mother and sleep on the sofa in the living room of her small apartment. Now that was a huge come down from living in a mansion, you know, and the funny thing was, well, not funny, but what I didn't realize when I said I was willing to lose everything, I really didn't know what losing everything really meant, what it would really feel like. Because if anyone's been through that, you know, it's an incredibly lonely place. It's a place where you just almost lose all hope. You can't see any way out because I had nothing. And, you know, I used to lie awake on my mother's sofa feeling really stressed, unhappy, lonely. And I kept asking myself two questions. The first one was, why has this happened to me? Because I was successful. I didn't know why it had happened to me. And I'd always throughout my life, not just been in my own businesses and, and building up my wealth, I'd, I'd done everything I could to, to figure out how to be successful. So I, I used to be, a, you know, a seminar junkie, I'd go to lots of personal development or spirituality seminars, I learned to meditate, I learned to do all sorts of spiritual practice. I learned to how to reprogram my subconscious mind and change my beliefs and be motivated and have goals, have, a, have all your plans mapped out. But none of those had helped because it wasn't on my goals list to, to lose everything and end up on my mother's sofa. So that was the first question. And the second question was, what do I do now? Because I really couldn't figure out what to do. I had nothing. All of my friends were gone. I was in a strange town. There was no opportunities that seemed to me to get myself out of this situation. So there I was in this really disparate situation. But what I didn't really realize I realized much later when I figured out what happened, but what the real turning point was, what the real moment of awakening, if you like, was, is that I did probably something that in any other situation I would never have done. And that was, I literally gave up. 
you know, instead of trying to carry on, trying to figure out what to do, trying to work out how I could make some money, how I could get out of that situation, I literally said to myself, you know, I just give up. I don't know the answers to any of the questions as to why this has happened or what to do. I'm not going to try anymore. That's it. And I wasn't suicidal, but I was pretty low. But it was really this place of exhaustion to the point where I just could see nothing else. I mean, it was pretty even difficult to get out of bed in the morning, even though it was a very uncomfortable yeah. sofa. Yeah. And after that was really strange because it wasn't very long before a business came along and a wonderful relationship came along, far better than I'd ever had with anyone before. Then another business and another business. And before I knew it, I was no longer on my mother's sofa, but I was running businesses again. And I was had this great lifestyle and I had this freedom. You know, I started, um, I bought a, a, a brand new luxury motor home. I think you call them RVs and travel all around New Zealand, my home country for a year and a half. Then we moved to Europe and we bought a brand new yacht and we launched that and sailed all around Europe for eight years. And all of these things were happening like dominoes falling into place. And it was like, it didn't stop. These things kept happening. And I, and I remember, you know, you can imagine this feeling that when things are working in your life, and we've all had that experience temporarily sometimes, and you think, you know, things are working really well for some reason in this particular moment, but it doesn't last for very long. But for me, it did, it just kept going. And I just remember feeling this sense of relief. For somehow, this is all working. I feel like I'm in some sort of flow, some sort of something's taking over in my life that's not about stress, it's not about struggle, and things are showing up in my life that are actually working. And, you know, there's nothing more amazing than being on your own yacht in a beautiful bay in the, in the Greek islands, and you wake up in the morning and you you feel good and you just fall off the back and have a swim and you get up and you just think, and, you, and your businesses, you know, I was managing my three businesses remotely from wherever I was in the world and they were going well. There wasn't the problems, there wasn't the stress. And more than anything, it was the feeling. It was the feeling that I was finally doing what I was supposed to be doing. I was in the place that I was supposed to be. Every area of my life was working out well without stress and problems. And so I said to myself, I need to figure out why this is happening. Because why is it that all of the time that I spent struggling, trying to figure stuff out, trying to make things happen, working really hard, working on overcoming problems, trying to learn more, trying to go out and set higher goals and always be trying to achieve more and be very motivated. When I took that approach, everything fell apart. But this approach, which was in a strange sort of way, being in a, in a flow state, allowing things to happen, it was all working. So I wanted to find out what was really going on. And I know we talk about this thing about letting go and being in the flow and allowing things to happen. But the problem is most of the time we don't really know why that is like that. We just, and we think it's faith or something mysterious, and we just hope that it, that it keeps going when, it, when we experience it. But what I wanted to do was find out is there a science behind it? Is there actually a reason why your life works either in this state or in the struggle state? Because remember, I've ex I'd have experienced both. So I knew the difference and I knew it from a practical point of view. So I wanted to find out, is there a scientific reason or an actual practical reason as to why life is different? And really, that's the journey I went on was to discover there is a practical reason. There is a biological reason which keeps you or a way you you operate yourself which either keeps you stuck or keeps you in this flow having a much better quality of life a much more balanced life and a life where you actually feel like you're being the best that you can be and this is what you're here to do and it's not about stress and struggle so that became okay. my journey and that's what what I do now okay well we're going to hear about that next phase right after we hear a word from our sponsors Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And we have Liam Nottam in the room with us today, and he was just talking about some things that are very fascinating. I mean, we all go through struggles. We have the dark night of the soul. We know that sometimes you just don't ask the question, you know, what, what should I be doing or what else can come in? Because sometimes it's not what we're expecting. 
And, and I'm really excited to, for this next segment because what I'm going to ask you, Liam, is what were the steps for you to take to get you where you are? Because you talked about the brain, and I know that's where your self-discovery came from. And I am sure, I know I would love to know if there's a shortcut because it's been a journey on my life too of where I am, but I'm also discovering too, the more I allow and release and surrender and trust, things change. But that doesn't mean I have what you have. So I would love to get some tips and I'm sure our audience would love to learn more as well. Sure. Well, you know, it's remarkably simple, all of this. And I think what we tend to do as human beings, particularly when we're after success and having the best life possible, we overcomplicate everything and we forget the most basic things about life and the way life works. And the most, the first thing to realize, the most important thing that we've all forgotten in a, which is bizarre, is that nature rules everything. Yeah. We're governed by nature. You know, we can't get away from our natural, our natural world. And not only does nature rule everything, nature has rules that you can't get away from. For instance, you can stand on a 10 story building and you can pray, meditate, motivate yourself, change your beliefs, write down a goal, be determined to go up in the air if you jump off. But it isn't going to happen. You're going to, the law of gravity will, doesn't care about what you're thinking or, or whatever else is going on inside you. So nature rules. Nature has rules. And the overriding principle or rule of nature is that every living thing is designed biologically with the most primary purpose of surviving. So that is the overarching rule of nature. Everything about you and every living thing is designed to survive. And not just to survive, but to survive for as long as possible. And the way you survive for long, as long as possible is you are the best that you can be. The better you are, the greater your chances for survival. So nature is designed. And if you look in the rest of nature, if you really look, you see this is what is happening. Everything is designed to be the best that it can be so that it has the greatest chance for survival. Science has a word for this. It's called homeostasis. Homeostasis means the optimum functioning of the organism and every living thing is designed biologically to be in that state, to be its best so that it has the greatest chance for survival. So the interesting thing is, how does nature do that? Well, nature provides every living thing with a machine, if you like, or a mechanism whose sole job is to make sure that happens, that that organism achieves this state of optimum being, if you like, so that it has the greatest chance for survival, homeostasis. And that machine is a brain. So all a brain is, is a survival machine that's designed to ensure that that organism does whatever it needs to do and everything functions in the best possible way to ensure that it is the best that it can be so that it has the greatest chance for survival. Now, for humans, we have exactly the same makeup. We have exactly the same biological design. And we have a brain that's designed to make us the best that we can be in the state of homeostasis so that we have the greatest chance for survival. And for us, that also means it doesn't just mean being as good as we can be physically. It also means mentally and emotionally. In other words, it's designed to make sure that you're happy, that you're feeling fulfilled, that you're having the best life possible, that you're doing the right things, that you're enjoying life, that you're not dealing with problems and struggle and stress which don't help you survive, they actually shorten your life. So that's the way your brain is designed. So, and the, but what's interesting, and there's been some recent research I read in a book recently, I can't quite remember the name of the book now, but, but what it concluded was that whereas all of nature is 98% successful, in other words, 98% of all living things are in a pretty well permanent state of homeostasis, optimum functioning, human beings, we are 98% unsuccessful because if you, and if you were to ask most people, do you feel that you're in the best that you can be? Are you the happiest, most fulfilled doing what you think you should be doing to have the best life possible? Very few people would tell you that. So this study concluded, you know, we're 98% unsuccessful. So why is that? We're the only, we're the odd ones out in nature. Why aren't we all happy being the best that we can be when we have, we're designed to do that biologically we're designed to be that way. We have a machine that's designed to make sure that it happens. What's gone wrong? Why aren't we like that? Well, there's really only one conclusion. 
and that's what I came to pretty quickly, we're using this machine the wrong way. We're not making it, allowing it to operate in a way that it will ensure that we achieve this state of homeostasis. Instead, we're using it in a way that creates problems in our life. And if you think of any machine, if you think of a motor car, which is a good example, a motor car is a machine. It, is, it only has one job. It's to get you from where you are to where you want to go. And it'll do that predictably. It's, it should do it in an enjoyable, safe way. But if you're not getting to, if you're, you're in a motor car and you're not getting to where you want to go and it's not an enjoyable ride and there's things going wrong in the car, what's happening? You're not driving it the right way. You're not using it the right way, are you? That can be the only, only conclusion you can come to. And it turns out, when I got into studying more about how the brain works and seeing, interestingly enough, spirituality and science are both teaching exactly the same thing about how the brain works. But when I started to really study this and see how this worked, I could see that, yes, we've been taught all of the wrong things about how to use our brain. In fact, we've never really been taught or told that who you are biologically, what your biological purpose is, what you have that's provided for you to make sure you achieve your biological purpose. And we've certainly never been taught how to use it, this machine. In fact, we've been taught all of the wrong things about how to use it. And what happens? We stay in a state of struggle and stress and problems showing up in our life. But as I proved to myself, once you switch the way you use your brain, you get into this homeostasis state and things start happening. You get into what people have called the flow state, being in the zone or in the flow, and things go smoothly in your life. That's the biological way. That's the natural way. That's the way we're designed to live. And that's our purpose for being here. Okay, so how do you do it? Because I know I'm getting more in a flow state and I'm watching, uh, I'm allowing, okay? I'm understanding, I'm more in balance with myself. I understand the homeostasis part of doing that. So I'm, I have always taken care of myself. I could always do better, but I'm human. And, and now I'm more in a state of flow, allowing, receiving, and I'm seeing things changing around me. And if, you know, the limiting beliefs come up or the negative self-talk, it's, you know, just flip it because it's not serving me. But to get to where you are, it's like, well, what, there's another missing link or two that I think that, because, because as humans, we don't always stay in that place. You know, we're always seem to be bouncing all over the place. And there's a, a way to stay there. I know that I understand that, but that doesn't mean, I know that I stay there pretty much because I spend a lot of time by myself in quiet time and st just resting, not resting necessarily, but you know, I'm in a restful state, I should say. I'm not in a chaotic frame of mind. So I'm just kind of curious of what was that when you finally got where you're saying it's still coming, it's still coming, it's still coming, because I, I get that we sabotage ourselves, but you weren't doing that because it's like you found the secret. So I'm really curious because I want to make sure that I'm on the right path. And if there's anything I can do to get to where I, where you are, I want to know how to do that because I'm selfish that way. <laughs> well, it's your purpose for being here, right? You know, it's all our purpose to be here is to be our best so that we contribute to ourselves and to the rest of the world in the best possible way. That's, that's, that's biology that because we, we're not here just to help our own survival. Right. We're ha here to help the survival of the species. And you can help people a lot more to survive better when you're good, when you're strong, when you're healthy. You can, you know, in old days, you can chop down the trees to build the shelter or fight off the wild animals when you're strong, he happy, healthy and resourceful. So this is this is natural. This is biological. And in fact, because it's biological, it's so simple. It's actually really, really simple. It's not necessarily easy. And the reason it isn't easy is because we've been taught a whole string of habits to do everything the opposite way throughout our entire life. But really what it comes down to, I can just explain it really simply. Yes, there are four parts of the brain and essentially they work together to activate one of two natural states that we live in. The first is what I call the creative state. And this is when you have a part of your brain, one of the four parts of your brain that's activated, which I call your creative brain. And this is located biologically right in the very center of your head. It's predominantly in the pineal gland and a couple of other places as well, which people might have heard of. 
But really what the creative brain does, this is the master of your life. This is the part of your brain that is designed to direct your life. Because as the name that I've given it suggests, it is about your creativity, but it also contains your imagination. It contains your intuition. This is where you get those gut feelings about you should do something or you shouldn't do something, that little voice sometimes we call it. And often we ignore it and we try and you know, justify doing the opposite, which always creates problems. I'm sure people would have experienced that. So it's where that sense of knowingness about something comes from. It's where you see new opportunities. You suddenly say to yourself, oh, I could do that or that'd be a good idea. It's also where all your problem solving ability comes from. You know, this is why you can be struggling away with a problem for weeks on end, trying to figure out what to do, coming up with all sorts of analysis, and you leave it for a little while and you go something and do something different and you suddenly go, ah, I've suddenly got the answer. Why didn't I think of it before? Well, it's because you weren't activating this part of your brain, but it has all of the problem solving ability. It knows all of the things that you need to do and have in your life for you to be the best that you can be, you to be the happiest that you are, you can be, which are generally things that you haven't got on your goals list. You know, they're unexpected things that show up that you go, wow, this is great. So this is all your creative brain at work. And when we are in a state of homeostasis, when we are functioning optimally, it's when this part of the brain is activated. And many people have described the state, you know, peak performance athletes or artists, creators, they all talk about this place where something else takes over to assist them to be more than they possibly could imagine. You know, if you ask any musician who, who writes music, where did you get the idea for that great song? Where did you get the idea for that symphony or whatever it is? They all say exactly the same thing. You know what the answer is, where it came from? I don't know. They don't know where it, they just said, well, I don't know, it just, it just came to me I, out of the blue, you know. This is the creative brain at work. It has all of this power, all of these resources. And when you're in that state, you naturally do the right things and the right things come and fall into place in your life. That's what it's about. Okay. So the trick uh, is to activate that part of the brain, to live in that permanent state. But the problem is we have another part of the brain okay. that Can gets we talk, in the way. Let's, okay, we'll get back into that when we take a quick commercial break. Welcome back everyone to the journey of an awakening spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we're streaming on the Build Brave TV network. And we have Liam Nottam in the room with us today, and he is now getting ready to tell us what gets in our way when we allow the creative juices to flow and why we struggle in perpetuating what we continually want in our life. Right, well, as I was just mentioning before, before the break, we're supposed to be in this natural state of flow, homeostasis. This is being, this is the optimum functioning of the organism, like all of nature. But we have another part of our brain that thinks it's in control that gets in the way. And it's what I call the survival brain. And the survival brain is all about protecting you from threats or dangers. So whenever, you know, you think when the brain was formed millions of years ago, um, there were lions roaming around or whatever it was, snakes in the grass, and we needed to have a weapon to protect ourselves from danger. So the way the brain operates is that when it recognizes as a threat to your survival, it shuts down this creative part of your brain, diverts all of the energy and resources to the defense mechanism of your brain, which is the survival brain. And that's when you get into this fight flight um, state or this reactive state or this struggle state. It's not just about reacting in, in, um, in panic, it's about being in a struggle state. And what activates it is there are triggers that, that essentially the, what determines which part of your brain is activated is your emotional state. So, <clears throat> and, and your stuck part, if you like, is because of your subconscious fears. We all have these fears, or most of us do, that we're not even aware of, but your brain knows that they're there. And if you trigger those subconscious fears, it creates feelings of fear, worry, stress, anxiety, frustration, anger. And the minute you feel those emotions, what's happening on a biological level is you are shut, pushing your brain into the survival state and you are shutting down your creative state. So it's really simple. What you need to do is stop the triggers. Identify what is causing you to feel bad, feel stress, fear and worry. And really, 
it's most of the things you don't need. It, it doesn't need to do. You, we, we're just in the habit of allowing it to do this. But to stop those triggers, and when you do, you automatically stop activating that part of your brain and you, you allow this creative part of your brain, the emphasis on the creative part, to do its job. And that's when all the magic happens. So all you need to do is identify the triggers, stop them triggering the wrong part of your brain, and then you just allow life to unfold for you. It, it, it really is as simple as that. It's not about trying to figure out what to do. It's not about trying to analyze your goals or come up with plans. They're all going to be provided for you. It's just like it says in the Bible. Do not worry about what you shall eat, drink, and wear. It's all going to be provided for you. It doesn't mean don't worry about what you shall eat, drink, and, and wear. Sit down and write a goals plan and work hard towards it, and then you, then you can earn it. It says it's going to be provided for you because this is the way your brain is designed to work. But if you feel, if you trigger this other part of your brain, which, which is triggered by fear, worry, stress, anxiety, anger, frustration, you're going to stay stuck because that part of your brain is not doesn't know how to get you what you want, doesn't know how to solve problems, doesn't know any of the stuff the creative brain knows. All it knows is how to get you out of a danger. Most of the time, which isn't there, it's just that your brain has created an imaginary one. That makes total sense because that's what I'm doing. I mean, I think a lot of people feel it's habitual. It's a habitual pay, um habit that people have with when they're struggling it's like well this is what i'm supposed to do or you know something this happened to me as a kid and they're not conscious of what that limiting belief that paradigm whatever it is you know this is maybe how mom or dad handled a situation and you just took it on because you didn't put your reasoning capacity so it sounds like you know just being fully present and 100 conscious in what you're thinking even because I've been doing a lot of studying and working on habitual behaviors, okay? Because everything we do is habitual. That's part of what our human condition is. But just, and we're never, and not all habits are bad. I mean, getting up, having coffee, brushing your teeth, taking a shower, those are not bad habits. Those are good habits. But just recognizing it's a habit. And then what are you thinking when you're in your habit? Because a lot of times we zone out, but we're not conscious and present. And I know that when I've stayed present, like I'm taking a shower and if I, I got, when I got this new shower head, it's like, oh my God, I'm never leaving the shower. And it's, and it's just like this cool thing because it's like something that's pleasurable and it makes the rest of my day pleasurable. Even if weird stuff happens, I'm still, it's because it's this big rain head shower and it just, you know, it's like surround yourself what makes you happy. That's what I say. Because if, as long as I'm doing everything to get rid of the stress, I can see that where I'm allowing the flow and all of this and just stop the head trash. I mean, that's what I'm hearing you say is really pay attention, do what makes you happy and quit worrying about the small stuff because it's going to take care of itself. It's it, because again, when they ask, say five years from now, is this going to be a problem for you in five years? And if the answer is no, then let it go. Well, absolutely right. And But you know, you're, you're totally right about this thing about habits. You know, what, one of the things we're all in the habit of doing, or most people are in the habit of, of doing, is having things in their life, allowing things in their life that make them feel bad. So they're in the habit of creating these triggers yeah. that are triggering yep. the wrong part of the brain. And there's some really obvious examples, and this is what I help people in my coaching there are obviously examples like watching the news why would you watch yeah. the news when it makes you feel bad it's having a conversation with somebody that you're not enjoying you're talking about something about something terrible that's happening in the world or some problem or some problem in your own life why would you have that conversation because all it's doing is making you feel bad that's another trigger having a relationship with somebody that makes you feel bad that isn't working and it could be a business relationship, maybe an employee or or your the job that you have. It could be a romantic relationship. Now, if all of these things are making you feel bad, what you've got to realize is that they are a trigger. They are putting you in the stuck brain state on a biological level. And so you need to, to make a decision that you're not going to that you that you're going to get rid of those things. Now sometimes that people say to me, Well, I can't get rid of my marriage and I can't get rid of my 
employee or I can't get rid of my business or I can't just go and give it my job. But here's the thing, if you know there's another part of your brain that as long as you stop triggering these stuck, these, these wrong feelings, as long as you stop creating situations in your life that are going to make you feel stressed and anxious, your brain is going to take care of you. Your brain is designed biologically to make everything that is the best for you happen in your life to make sure you do the right things. Why would you be worried? Why would you be afraid? That's why in the Bible it says, be not afraid. 350 times, I think it is, or 365 times. It's because God, if you like, or infant, whatever you like to call the, whatever is managing, the, whatever the intelligence is that's actually managing this whole system, including your system, you know, if you knew that it, it was designed this way, why wouldn't you trust it? Why wouldn't you allow it to, to work? It was like a car. Why would you, if you knew a car was just a machine designed to get you in an, give you an enjoyable ride to where you wanted to go, you wouldn't get out every second and worry about and check the engine and the wheels and worry that it wasn't going to do the job. You just know that's the way it works. So your job is simply to manage, to stop the triggers, to manage your brain the right way, the, bra the way it tells you in the Bible, as I said, to manage it. Be not afraid. That's your only job. And when you do that, everything in your life changes for the better. Everything that's supposed to be there for your best, for being your best, is going to be there. And everything that isn't is going to fade away. That's really, it's so simple. And as I say, we overcomplicate it because we keep thinking, what about goals? And what about, you know, I've got to, I can't do that. I've got to force things to happen. It'll mean, if I do that, it'll mean I'll, la I'll be lazy and I'll waste my life and I won't do anything. It doesn't mean that at all. When you're in that state, you are super productive. That's when you, you have all this inspiration and you achieve great things to, and you're loving what you're doing. That's the whole point. It, it really is quite simple once you get it. And I get that because the thing that I've, I'm learning and, and discovering within my own self, I mean, I've always heard it's not about the cursed house, that that's not our job as to how do we make this happen. Our job is to dream about what we want. And because we are a goal achieving machine, that's what we are. That's what our function is, is what can we create? And the one thing that I have been really getting a hold of is I've been, I did the seminar, all these things were happening and I'm riding the wave, right? And things are moving, things are popping, things are just coming all sorts of different ways. I'm relaxing into it. I'm not allowing fear and all the things that you talk about. I'm not allowing, I'm just allowing it to come in and relax into it. And if I get nervous, then I have somebody to talk to, to get me through whatever it is. So I don't trigger the survival reptilian brain. And then I was like, okay, everything's not moving anymore. And then, you, you know, that little weird panic thing comes up. And then I was told you're in the ebb because life is an ebb and flow. So I'm in the ebb. So I got very comfortable being in the ebb, right? And now I'm getting back on the wave again because I'm over the ebb and now the wave's coming. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I don't think I almost like the ebb better than the wave. And it's learning balance because I think it's both important. So I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm really seeing a bigger picture. So yes, please go. I know we're running out of time. So I just want to make one final really important point because a lot of what you've said, I'm going to respectfully disagree with because it doesn't, okay. it, it doesn't <laughs> align with biology. It doesn't align okay. with nature. And one, one thing you said is we're a goal setting machine and we just have to focus on what we want and allow it to happen. That's not the way it works at all, because I think if you really analyze your life, anyone listening or watching, the most significant things that happened to you in your life, what's one of the most significant was you meeting the person that you married. And then you start, and then you, your life goes in a completely different direction. A very, but the day before you met them, the person who is going to change your life more than anybody else in ways you never dreamt of, you didn't sit down and have a goal and say, tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'm going to meet that person and they're going to be this, this type, and we're going to have children, and this is where we're going to live, and this is what we're going to do. They just show up. And this is what I'm saying, because all of the things that have happened to me over the last few years that have been magical and amazing, they were never things I possibly could have imagined I'd be doing. I had no clue. I, I never had it on a goal so that I'd, been, I'd be sailing around the world and doing all these magnificent things. And the reason is it doesn't make sense from a biological point of view. And 98% of goals that are set by people never get achieved right. it's one of, it's only about two percent so it doesn't work and here's the biological reason why it doesn't work 
because nature operates on the principle of biological efficiency. So your creative brain, it knows exactly what you need to have in your life. It knows what your goals should be when you don't know what they are. But the thing is, it's not going to show you that your, what your ultimate goals or what your ultimate lifestyle could, should be because it operates on a law of biological efficiency, which means that everything is designed to expend the minimum amount of energy and conserve the most amount of energy for the maximum output. Because, for instance, we don't know in ancient times, we might not have been able to eat for a week before we found new food. So we had to minimize the energy we expend to get the best possible result. So what's the best possible way for you to be the best that you can be and achieve every great thing in your life that you are designed to do? It's not for your brain to show you what they are. Because if my brain had told me those years ago, you're going to be sailing around the world, you're going to be doing all these amazing things, I would have said, that's absolutely crazy. Not because I didn't think I could do it, which I didn't, but also because I didn't know that's what I wanted. But imagine my brain told me that and said, this is your goal, this is what you need to work towards. What would I have done? I would have resisted. I would have stopped and said, hang on, I don't think I want that. I don't know if I want that. What would happen? I don't know how to do that. How, what, what are you talking about? What am I doing? I'm wasting energy. I'm not getting on with it and, and making that goal happen. So all of the things my brain is trying to get me to do, I'm resisting. I'm not doing. So my brain also doesn't show me the, the 20 steps that I need to take to get there. Because what would I do then? I doubt I'd analyze. I'd go, well, hang on, step number three. Now, if I do that, I don't know if step number four is going to happen. I need to get some more information before I start just to make sure that I'm doing the right wasting all that energy again. So the way you're biologically designed is not to set goals, is not to try and figure out stuff. It's to take the very next step. It's to be in your creative state and take the next step with confidence, not think about where it's going to go. Just know that you're being that your job is just to do that thing. And that's when all the magic starts to show up in your life. That's when it did for me was when I gave up trying to figure out what to do or what I even wanted to do. And all these, all this information, these ideas, people, opportunities, they all start showing up because your brain is bringing to you what you need in that moment. And we talk about mindfulness and being present. That's what that is. That's also what faith is. That's what being biologically efficient is. That's what being in the natural law of least resistance, which is another fundamental law of how nature works. The less resistance you have, the faster you go. That's the same for everything. So that's a, and all that comes down to being in the present moment and taking the very next step and not trying to figure out where it's going to go. And I've talked to many other people about this too, very successful people, and they all agree. You'd never, you know, you could never have being on your goals list, the things that show up that you end up doing. Right. So I agree with that. <laughs> so my question so is, so here's the question that I'm going to have, because I, I understand exactly what you're saying. I truly do. And it makes perfect sense. And what's coming up that I keep hearing is, well, how do I know what the next step is? If I don't have like a direction, how do I know? So when you were on your mom's couch sleeping, you finally surrender and say, I don't know what the hell to do anymore because I've been in those places too. And I took the next step. What was it that when you said all of a sudden your partner comes in and then business opportunities are coming in, what was the thing that happened that started taking you off your mom's couch? Let's just go to you. Where you found and how long did it take for your partner to come in and all these opportunities? Like what was that very first step for you? Because mine was gratitude. When I didn't know what else to do, I just said, thank you for allowing me to be here and, you know, that type of thing. So what was it that that got you to take that step that you fell into trusting and surrendering 24-7? I can't re remember what the very first step actually was, but I can remember many steps. I, I can remember the feeling, and th this is the way I live, and this is the way I have, have lived, and Believe me, the dominoes keep falling into place and, and amazing things keep happening to the, to, this, to the extent I just accept it now. And I also understand this is how it works. But, but there were plenty of examples very early on. For instance, someone said to me, or I came up with this idea about how I, how I could work for somebody part time to earn some money with a skill that I had. So I just suddenly got that idea and I approached them and said, you know, I could work for you doing this for a few hours a week. It wasn't even a part of their business that they had 
operating at the time. This was something new that I created. So I got that idea. And funnily enough, it was in a shop. It was a retail store. And I was in there one day doing my work for the... And I came out from the back office where I was working because it wasn't in the store. It was at the back helping out. And there was a man standing there who I hadn't seen for 25 years. And he recognized me. And he said, hey, Liam, what are you doing? And I said, well, not a lot. <laughs> he said, there's an opportunity to set up a business right next door to where my business is. It'd be perfect for you. It's got all of your skills. You'd be great at it. That's what I did. Now, I don't know how I, I had no money. I had, don't know where the money came from. But a couple of months later, there I was with a business, my own business. So all of those sorts of things, you don't need to try and figure the stuff out. You don't even need to try and think, well, I wonder what's going to show up. You just need to get into a state of not of not having these triggers, keeping you stuck, keeping you stressed, afraid and worried by switching off all the news and all that noise and distraction. And also there's there's another side to it, which is learning how to deal with your subconscious fears. We haven't got time to talk about that, but it is something I, I do in depth in my coaching with people when I help them with this. Get switch off the triggers and the right thing is going to show up. And when you're thinking, I don't know what's going to show up, or I'm worried that I don't know that nothing will show up, what are you doing? You're stuck on the wrong part of your brain. You're not trusting and allowing the miracle, if you like, to show up. You only need to focus on maintaining, stopping the triggers so that you keep this part of your brain active and working for you. And you'll see what to do. You'll know what to do. You'll feel motivated about the right thing to do. And you just need to follow that and do it. And then just keep living like that rather than all of this you know analysis goal setting because frankly it doesn't work that's what's keeping people stuck i don't meet many people who are i used to go to a lot of seminars i never met many people who are happy at the seminars learning all the stuff about setting goals and you know working hard it didn't work for people it didn't work for me so but but this does work because it's much more natural it's it's our natural state it's the way we're designed Okay, so what would be one piece of advice you would offer the audience to help them move into a different direction to achieve their dreams or to become a better person? Give up on your dreams for a start. Okay. Give up on, on this idea that you need to be a better person. You are perfect. You don't know what you want. You don't know what your dreams are. You might think you do, but there's another part of you that, you know, often I work with people and they contact and they're in this, this stuck stress state and they have these ideas of what they think they need that's going to make them happy. But the problem is a dream or a goal, you're creating it when you're in a frustrated state because you're saying to yourself, I need that to be happy or I can't be happy until I get that or I want that. You, so you're stuck and you're using the part of your brain that therefore doesn't know what you really want, what you should have. And often people contact me when they get this and they say, you're not going to believe what I'm doing now, Liam. I'm doing something I never dreamt I'd be doing, something completely different. And I'm so happy. And of course, you didn't know what, what you were supposed to be. We can't figure this stuff out. It's, a, it's in a different part of our brain. It's not in our thoughts and our experience. So give up trying to figure out what you want and instead think about the triggers. What's causing me to feel bad in my life and make a conscious decision to at least start with. You can turn off the news. You can stop those conversations. You can stop these triggers, a lot of them, and then just see what happens and just st manage your emotional states so that you're not using these triggers and then just say, well, what, what's the next thing I should do? And don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Just see how it feels. Is the next thing to do to ring up this person or send an email or go down to a store and look at a book or something? You know, whatever it is, just take that next step. And when you do that, the next one after that's going to be revealed. Your brain's going to say, good, you did that. Do this next. And you just get into the flow of life. And you trust, you let go, and all the magic happens. All righty. Well, God, thank you so much. I mean, it, it sounds so easy, but as we both know, it's not. Turning off the news is easy. And then just see what comes up. Because I, di I did that years ago. I turned off the news and I watched big changes start to occur in my life. And, you know, so now it's paying attention to the thoughts. So I want to thank you so much, Liam, for being on the show with us today. It's a very valuable insight. I love the different perspective because I can see what you're saying. And it makes perfect and total sense on many levels. So thank you again for being with us. Thanks so much for having me, Kathleen. You're welcome. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And if you liked 
and saw any value in the show, I would love it if you like and subscribe to the show, send the link to friends and family. I think this is a really interesting way of looking at life. It's a totally different perspective from what I have, but I can see the value in it. And we all have a unique way of doing things in our life. And it is about finding our way and the uniqueness within us. And I just make sure that you just check out um, Kathleen Flanagan, Awakening Spirit and Grandma's Natural Remedies because we have coupon codes there. We have free meditations. And um, this basically concludes our show for the day today. And I want to thank all of you again for joining us. I will see you next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.